Discobolos. This guy here is a 19th century plaster cast of an ancient Roman statue that dates from the second century AD, which is itself an adaptation of a fifth century BC Greek original, which would have been made in bronze. Now, unfortunately for us, that bronze original is lost. It was melted down presumably a long time ago. But this is one of a number of statues to survive from Rome, all of which are so similar to one another that they clearly all reference the same really rather famous original. Not only that, but there's an ancient author writing in Rome at that time that actually tells us that a discus thrower was made in the fifth century BC by the artist Myron, and so we can even tie this type to a particular sculptor. Now, I want you to imagine that this is the fifth century BC lost bronze original. Where was it displayed? Well, it was probably displayed in a sanctuary, presumably put up in commemoration of a victor, um, somebody that was good at throwing the discus. It's absolutely typical of the kinds of bodies that we associate with Greek art of the fifth century BC, the classical period. It has broken free of the block and the frontal plane to actually occupy space in a far more interesting way. It's not only occupying space, it's also doing time in an interesting way. What you're seeing here is someone caught in the moment, captured as though in motion. We call bodies like this naturalistic. That doesn't mean to say they're real. I've probably led quite a sheltered life, but I've never seen a body that looks quite like this. And I've never seen anybody throw the discus quite like this. The key to this statue's power is all in the ism of naturalism. If it did actually look like a clone of reality, it would be a far less interesting and enigmatic. Piece. In terms of the Roman statue itself, that Roman statue was found at the giant villa that belonged to the Emperor Hadrian just outside of Rome in Tivoli. The statue was found unfortunately without its head, but it was immediately whisked off to a restorer's studio as tended to happen in the 18th century and an ancient head set onto the body. Now, if you look at that head, you will see that it's staring down to the ground, whereas the other famous version of this statue type in Rome had the head set on the body as it would have been originally staring back towards the discus. This piece was offered to England's most famous collector at the time, Charles Townley, who was slightly anxious about the fact that this had a different position to the head. But what was interesting about that is that in time, this became really rather admired in its own right and very kind of famous. Why? Well, because in some senses, the fact that it looks down to the ground rather than behind it makes it more contained, more contemplative, and therefore an object of our gaze. And in that sense, I think it replaces action man with something sort of more passive, something that actually asks for us to look at it and admire it. In terms of the cast itself, this plaster piece was given to the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge in 1880 by Henry Sedgwick, who was co-founder of Newnham College. And today it stands here in this cast gallery as one of our most interesting and admired pieces. Mm -hmm.